All right, we are on attempt number two. I had a better way to mount this up. I just put a nail back there. Um, I'm, I'm wondering if it's gonna twist the rod so much that it, it breaks it. I'm leaning towards just going back to my threaded rod method and uh, bending the, the, the pre-threaded rods uh, because this has been too much work, I feel like, and I don't think it's gonna make a very good product. I'm not getting much out of it. I'll just make multiples. And if they, they have an issue, then I'll just replace it with a new one. All right, I've been defeated once again. I need to just let that project go. It's not worth messing around with. I didn't tighten this, the tires on my trailer enough the other day, and this is the result. So I ordered new studs. Let's see if they fit. Not quite the exact same size, but they might work. Well, that seemed to fit okay. My old trailer tires and they have seen better days. Uh, when I bought the Sanibel, it came with a spare set of tires. I guess for the old ones, the owner had to replace the whole wheels. And I mean, they look they look good as new to me. So I'm just gonna use these on my trailer now. I'm gonna move to the bilge. I have oh here it is. I have this uh this special sea I can't read it seawater ink. Uh, some guy over there sent me this cool bilge pump uh, switch and it's it's like solid state I guess and it that won't it won't pump oil overboard if there's oil um, on the bilge only if water um, sets it off so I'm gonna wire that up now I've been procrastinating this job for for months and uh, Let's see if I get anywhere with it today. I did the the wires were just it was just a rat's nest down here. I cut I cut out some of the some more of the unused ones. There's still plenty of unused wires. I just want to be a little bit more organized down here. Um, the way the way the bilges are wired up was kind of weird too. Um, I'm gonna start. I think one. I think either, either this pump or the float switch is broken. This is my uh, secondary bilge pump, the bigger one. So I'm going to first pull out the switch, see if that works, and then the pump, see if it works, see what's broken. And we'll move from there. So there's the switch. I think we'll probably replace this with that new switch we've got. And uh, might pull this pump out and test it too. Yeah, I guess it will, this pump works. I'm going to test the old switch, and that works. No problem. So I guess it was just the wires were wiring was bad before. Uh, let's test out that new switch. Give it a try. So this switch has three wires instead of two wires, like the, the float switch. So I don't know, maybe it uses electricity or something. I don't know. Let's give it a shot. And apparently you have to have the black and the red wires hooked up to the switch and then the brown hooked up to the pump for it to even work. So I got a cup of water. We'll see if it comes on. Just putting the very tip in. That turns on. Let me take it out. It's still running. Hold on, I'm gonna take the turn off. And then that turns off. So it seems to work. So now I'm curious if water is sloshing around the bilge and like you had it on the side, if the little sloshing sets it off. Let's see. So you're just kind of like getting, getting it wet every once in a while. Cause it'd be nice if that didn't set it off. And it doesn't. That's kind of cool. I like that. Let me hold it in there. And it comes on. And then it runs for a while. For a little while. Come on. And that turns off. So according to the uh, the, the manual that this the fuel is not going to set this off. Put it in some diesel, and the pump doesn't seem to be running, so that's cool. So one thing I'm curious is if you have uh, just a little bit of fuel mixed in with your bilge water, your your boat is sinking, so you got a little fuel on top. Like my bilge always tends to end up a little bit of fuel in it, but the bilge pump still turn on, and it still does. So that seems like a pretty good product. 
Although I don't think I'm, I think I'm just gonna use my normal float switch though because uh, it just seemed a little more complicated to wire up. But this is definitely pretty cool. So I really need to clean some of this, this junk out here before I, before I put this stuff back in here. So I'm gonna get the vacuum and a brush and start scrubbing, scrubbing this out. So, but the crazy thing is some of these wires, look, they don't do anything. This wire just loops back and attaches to the same point. It, it just, it just makes it needlessly confusing. I just need to cut this out. I've got the builds as clean as it's ever been. And while I was at it, I also cleaned the area underneath the, the water tank. So the water tank is ready to go back in. I'm going to run the wires, I guess, next. I got the engine bay open and then some of these wires go to the build. Just was one of them. And I need to take some out and I need to put some new ones back in. And just kind of generally clean all this, this stuff off out of here. So one thing's led to another, and now I am cleaning up this rat's nest back here. I've already moved, removed like 10 wires and uncovered some really sketchy <laughs> wiring. These were, these were all, uh, these were all hooked up. So there was like a USB charger coming off of that. Um, I mean, it was originally a 12 volt socket and then I had to get into a USB port. That was charging, this was charging my phone for the last year. I'm using double heat shrink on these connections because they could go underwater. And I'm doing it a lot simpler. I'm just wiring the uh, the pumps and the switches to together um, instead of also having the, uh, the switch up there as another option to turn it on. That's how it was originally set up. You could flip the switch or you could use the float switch, but I, I just, it means that you need to run two more wires down here and uh, I just want to have it simpler. I've never really had a, a use to turn them on manually. I guess the idea behind that is if one of the float switches uh, fails to work and you realize it, you could turn the, the switch on. But um, I think since I have two at those pumps, I've got my redundancy right there. And uh, I've never really needed to use it that way. So it's not really a concern of mine. We are all wired up here. And then now I just need to mount it down. Down in here, if I can find the holes again. So here are the builds pumps, uh, how they're rewired. Uh, it's, a, it's a little messy, but I needed to leave enough length in case I needed to change um, a switch or a pump down the road. Uh, but it's much, much neater than it was before. There was just a ton of unnecessary wires down here before, and I simplified it a little bit too. Um, all that remains is to attach the wires up to the uh, to the batteries. Okay, and the bilge pump's hooked up. Let's see if they work. Primary bilge pump. Yeah, secondary. Awesome. Great. Well, I'm in here doing electrical work. I'm gonna fix a couple of things up forward too. When I was cutting away. This area back here, I nicked some wires, so I need to reconnect those. I need to uh, fix this little guy. And then I'm gonna hook this wire, which used to charge my um, all my accessories, like phones and GPS and stuff. Uh, that's a little bit thin, too thin of a gauge wire for like the ch for all my, my main charging stuff. So I'm gonna use this wire to, to power the uh, this little fan. And this used to be on a little socket up here, but I really hate these sockets. They just get so rusty and then like as vibrations um, rock the boat, it will like knock, it'll push the sockets out because they have a little spring on the tip. Um, so this will be hardwired in and I'm, I got these little inline switches I'm gonna put in there. And then yeah, this is the other light I need to fix by just uh, kind of uh, re uh, splicing in a little bit of wire right there. Also, this is all the unused wire I removed from the boat today. Feeling pretty good about that. Just feels like, you know, cleaning things out. I think there's still a few more lines on this side that need to come out. Um, but this side's getting pretty, uh, pretty nice. And uh, I will need to run one more wire going from the control panel to the, uh, the bow lights. That, that wire was in really bad shape, so I'm gonna replace that too. So here's the switch I'm gonna use. 
I cut off the ends. So still I'm not able to get these lights hooked up, but I did get the fan working. Unfortunately, I hooked the wires up backwards first and it started smoking, so that might not last too long. And then I also put this little voltmeter. That was like an old one I had for my windless battery up here. So I'll be honest, I spent most of the day procrastinating. I didn't even get out here until like five o'clock to start working on the builds. I just really wasn't looking forward to that, that project, but it feels good to have that done. Now it's nice and clean, um, at least for now. I'm sure it'll get pretty gross pretty soon. Uh, and I also made pretty good headway on some of the wiring in the boat. Um, not too much more to go on that front. I am going to be taking a break from boat projects for the next few days. Uh, I'm going to get a little burned out and I need to have some energy to make it through the final push and get it, the boat launched. Um, I'm not going to film it probably the next few days, but I do have some, uh, a little backlog of a few projects I can post. So you should get another video. Until then, I'll see you guys next time.